Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something really cool. This is the all new Pickle Evo 2 designed by Alexandre Arvant and I hope you're pr I pronounced his name right. Um, he sent me this frame. It was cut by CNC Madness in Canada and it looks really cool. And um, go check out Alex on Thingiverse. He designed a lot of cool micro frames and this is one of them. So really nice frame and what I'd like to do today is to uh, show you my build with all the components that go in there because this frame is uh, designed specifically for the new 40mm nano split tie cameras. We have really fits them nicely and then I'm going to talk about a few other things like characteristics and a little extra my experiment with lithium ion batteries so I'm going to give you an update on that, how that went. But um, I can say already, I flew this thing for over 11 minutes, only using 60% of the cap uh, capacity of that battery. Uh, but there's also a few downsides, so stay tuned for that. I'll talk about this later. But first, let's take a closer look at this beautiful little frame. Now, the Pickle is the Pickle Evo 2, as I already said, is designed to have these new split type cameras in there that are 40 millimeters so you can see this is the new run cam split free nano and it's got a nano sized camera and it does HD recording and FPV with the same camera so this is the same principle as this Cadex Turtle for example here but with a way smaller cam which uh, which is of course perfect for nanos and this frame is designed specifically for this this is why it's got a dead cat layout so that means the front arms here are kind of moved to the back as well as the rear arms so these are straight these are in a bigger angle to the back and this what this does also they are further apart these front props what this does is just move your props out of the field of view of the camera so that you can have your HD recording and don't have these props in view. So that worked out really nice, no props in view on this one. The frame itself is 17 grams as far as I know. I didn't weigh it myself, I read things between 17 and uh, 19 grams. It's a 3mm bottom plate, so pretty thick solid carbon. I really like the looks of that um, thick plate here at the bottom. looks really cool and high quality. Also it's got some really nice chamfered edges, really good quality here by CNC Madness. The arms themselves are really pretty thin, so Alex was a bit worried that it might have issues with vibrations because you can kind of easily flex it. It's got a bit of flex to it, um, but so far I didn't have any issues, although I didn't try this yet on 3S, but on 2S I didn't have any problem with vibrations because if the frame is too soft and you have too aggressive motors and props on these micros, you tend to get uh, fly-offs. This is just the, the flight controller getting in a positive feedback loop and accelerate, accelerating the motors in an uncontrolled way and so your quad tries to escape. Um, that didn't happen yet. I could fly the beta flight stock pits without any issues on 2S. Um, 3S I will have to try that because uh, simply I forgot to pack some 3S batteries and only had 2S with me uh, when I flew this yesterday and I couldn't try again today because we had rain all day long. Uh, apart from that, uh, the frame has four M2 standoffs, these are 20 millimeter standoffs, so 20 millimeter standoffs were a lot of space for these micro components that was really relaxed to build it. I could fit the battery strap here between the standoffs of this extra board um, the split camera comes with. Initially apparently this is designed for the strap but my strap is a bit wider than these holes so I just put it here in the middle and also this is uh, better centered. The, the actual strap mounts are a bit too far towards the front of the quad. Now, I really like building this frame because it's got tons of different mounts that made it super easy. I'm using a 16x16 16 16 stack, there's 16x16 16 16 holes, there's 20x20 20 20 holes, and there's mounts for whoopsite boards, 
Then you have a 16 by 16 and 20 by 20 on the top plate. So I could just stack the boards here in two ways. There's the diatone 16 by 16 F411 Nano here in the bottom. And on top, coming from the other stand, coming from the other side, I have the the split. So that's really perfect. Alex also designed some TPU mounts for the camera, and there's um, these are the minimalist, pretty small light ones. There's also a bigger one because apparently this one could induce some jello. I didn't have any issues with jello though, but just in case there is a way stiffer, bigger one. And there's also a TPU mount if you want to use an XC antenna. So I'm using a linear, ante linear antenna here because I simply zip tied my VTX here to the rear stand off. Um, if you're using one of those, this perfectly fits in here. And you can mount this on the rear stand offs, and you're good to go. Um, I found a nice spot also for my Crossfire Immortal T here in the front. Everything really nice and easy to build. I mean, maybe except um, the only thing I had a hard time finding space for was the Ishi Nano VTX, but finally I just zip tied the antenna here to the standoff. The antenna is holding the VTX. I mean, it doesn't weight anything. It's a gram or something. So no worries here to, uh, to just very simply zip tie this here to the rear. Um, yeah, overall, I really like this frame. Uh, it was fun building it, and it's a really cool design. So, as I said, go check out um, Alex Thingiverse. I'll also link this in the video description, so it's easy for you to find. And now, uh, let's take the top plate off and take a closer look at my build and all the components I used. So, this is how the pickle looks inside. This is a Diatone F411 nano stack so this is a 16 by 16 f4 processor with the 16 by 16 13 amp 4 s rated efc and i have to say i really like pretty much all diatone stacks and flight controllers specifically because they have very well thought through layouts and this one here is no exception you can see all the pins you need are in a nice row here, super nice, easy to connect. The ones for the camera are here in front, so easier to, to wire up here to the cam. That's really always, they really do a very good job in my opinion. The only thing you have to be careful about with this flight control is that there are different versions, 1.0, 1.1 and 1.2. And they do look almost identical, but have different pin layouts here. So you have to really be careful that you get the right manual and uh, don't confuse the wires here, which is what happened to me, honestly, but just be sure to get, um, get the right, uh, right layout here. The VTX I use, and this is pretty much my go-to VTX for all micro builds right now. I hope you can kind of see it. It's this Ishin Nano 400 milliwatt VTX, and it really does 400 milliwatts. I tried this in an older video. And this is really cool because this little VTX, I mean, also it's super cheap, it's like 10 euros. Uh, in com combination with my Crossfire Nano receiver, this gives me a really, really good range on this little quad, which is perfect for cruising it around, which is what I mostly do with this. Now, another thing I'd like to show you are these beautiful RC and power motors. And this is pretty much becoming my favorite motor manufacturer, but just because how good the build quality is and how pretty these motors look. These ones are no exception. I really love this light blue and pink anodization they have. Looks really cool. Now, about this 1207 motor size, to be honest, I'm not really sure how they compare to 1404 because I didn't fly those on, on comparable builds. So I only flew the 1207 here on the Pickle for now and on a 2S and didn't put them on one of my other toothpick setups where I previously had 1404s on there. So I'm not really sure, but so far they felt pretty efficient and uh, pretty in control, especially with these. I mean, these are pretty aggressive 
props here. These are the Emax Avon, and you can see what a steep angle these blades have. So these are kind of aggressive, but it's perfect for 2S. And uh, just cruising around because it gives the, the quad a, a nice cruising speed to have higher pitch blades without being in, in very high RPM regions. And uh, that was really nice. So really good motors. And I hope I can, uh, I mean, I, I do more testing with them to compare them with 1404 and also the new 1303 and 1204 sizes that we will get soon. All right, let's also talk about the Roncam Split 3 Nano I have in here and maybe split type cameras in general. So I have to say, in terms of performance, this is kind of close to this Cadex Turtle V2. Uh, it can compete with a two lens split type camera like the Tartier here. This is the advantage that, I mean, apart from doing 4K and having way better HD than this, this has a separate lens for FPV and your FPV feed and latency isn't compromised, which uh, unfortunately is the case on all of these one lens cameras. So my personal opinion is that I don't really like them, but okay, they, they are way smaller and lighter than these two lens cameras. This one wouldn't really fit in this frame, I think. And what what bothers me a bit is that they don't do anything really right. So your FPV feed is a bit compromised. It looks, to my opinion, it looks a bit foggy. And there is more delay, although I didn't notice the delay, to be honest, for cruising around. It was um, totally fine. But the FPV feed isn't perfect. And the HD is, I mean, this is not, the HD is, that you're seeing is, is not really great. This is not something uh, that looks very good on YouTube. Um... So it's really, in my opinion, it's nothing for me personally, but this is a good product. And if you want to have this, you can live with slightly compromised FPV and uh, the footage is good for good enough for you, the HD footage. Then it's a good product. The user experience is really fine. Um, it's reliable. I just plugged in my SD card, put the button, push the button to record and it was good to go. So it's a good product, but... I'm not really convinced of uh, these single lens split type cameras yet. And also um, the footage you're seeing is me cruising around with this pickle on A2S lithium ion that weights 110 grams. So please do not judge the flight characteristics of the pickle based on this. This is just to show you how the footage looks. Now the last thing I wanted to show you is this lithium ion battery that I built. A sort of makeshift battery pack that I built out of two Sony VTZ 5A. So these are 2600 milliamp hour cells rated for 35 amps, which is more than enough for the pickle. And um, since it's a 2S, it's got 7.4 volts with the two cells combined. And this is a pretty good match for the pickle because I really use this sort of like a very small long range quad just to cruise around and uh, have this sort of relaxed um, flying. And of course for this, a longer flight time is really good. So I wanted to try this lithium ion batteries and I mean so far it worked out quite good. I only did one test flight and I got 11 minutes of flight time using only 1,600 milliamp hours out of the 2,600. So I could have gone way further. I mean, 15 minutes probably wouldn't have been a problem, but there is one main downside now. These lithium ion batteries have a very low cutoff voltage. And while a lithium polymer, you would land at around 3.5 volts probably. You can take these down to two volts per cell, which then in turn, means you're flying on only four volts, which is only one S. And towards the end, I was really worried that my flight controller would actually shut down if I go below five volts. So I had landed at 5.5 volts, which was uh, 1,600 milliamp hours used out of this battery. But that's kind, of a, that's kind of a problem to use these cells on micro. So you, you can only go up to two S because the cells are 45 45 yeah 45 grams each so this is a 110 
gram uh, pack with the wires and everything. So I couldn't go up to 3S because it would just be too heavy. There are no or didn't at least didn't find any smaller cells that can supply enough amps to build a 304S. So we're pretty much stuck with 2S and 2S with the setups we have now means you cannot use the whole capacity this battery has because your voltage will just get so low that the quad is pretty much unflyable. Um, which is kind of a pity. I mean, 11 minutes still is great and I think I could have done maybe maybe 13, 14 and still be safe with the voltage. But I think, I mean, honestly, there is some potential to do something here because if, if that was the, the only thing that was stopping me and was still flying okay, the only thing that was stopping me is that it was afraid that my flight controller shuts down because it cannot handle um, less than 2S or, or less than 5 volts. So I will do more testing and also test out some specific setups. But uh, for now, for now, it was uh, it was fun to try this. But probably uh, for normal acro flying or freestyling, cruising around, I will still stick to lithium, uh, lithium polymer, and see how I can improve these lithium ions or come up with a setup that um, handles the bigger range in in voltage these have better. Alright guys, I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.